Hey everyone, welcome to the happy hour. Look, I've kind of figured out my lighting thing. Now I don't look like some emo kid from back in 2006, or whenever emo kids were a thing. This is the show where I drink alcohol and I talk to you. Sounds pretty exciting, I know. Um, what I like to do during this show is I like to showcase some beer, wine, cider, whatever alcohol I'm drinking that day and just give it a little talk and then from there go into i guess i'd say it's called the rant i would want to say it's it's kind of a rant or maybe it's just like a diary of sorts that i'm doing you know some online therapy anyway today i am featuring brass neck brewing they are a local vancouver company they're one of my favorite breweries in the city uh, I'm not actually focusing on any specific beer whatsoever because I actually got a four pack from them of four different beers. It's a pretty cool thing that they got going on right now. They're offering, uh, you can do uh, single tall boys and then just get like four of them. And then it comes as kind of a little party pack of all your favorite beer needs. It's also really cool because they, um, a lot of times they won't be doing the same beer very often they got a couple mainstays but a lot of it's just like rotation after rotation on beers that they're doing it's great because if you're someone like me who likes to try new things all the time it's a fantastic place to go every couple of weeks you got at least one or two new beers on their tap list that you're probably gonna try out maybe you like it maybe you don't right now the the one i just cracked open is uh it's a, a beer i haven't had before it's the uh, blacklight it's a black alt beer. I don't even know if it's like a style of beer I like or not, but we're gonna find out while I drink it. Does the trick, so I say that counts as liking it. Oh. All right, <laughs> wasn't what I expected, but actually pretty good. It's pretty malty. Uh, this isn't gonna be a beer reviewing show, so I'm not gonna delve too far into that. Now that we've uh, gotten the formalities out of the way, I've done a couple episodes of this uh, as they've gotten, I wanna say better and better. Maybe they've gotten the same. I don't really know. Maybe I've gotten less awkward uh, talking to absolutely no one. It's kind of a kind of a fun little exercise in public speaking without the people. Um, I was supposed to, I guess, have something that I wanted to talk about today, and I don't really have that much, uh, that I thought about, which makes it kind of weird that I decided to film this video today. Part of why I'm doing it is it's, uh, I'm going to be on the Sunshine Coast, uh, for a few weeks, and then, or maybe a week, I don't know, I'll be there for a bit. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to make uh, another video for a little bit uh, showcasing Vancouver. Ideally, I'd actually be able to uh, post something while I'm on the Sunshine Coast. There's a lot of really cool breweries and distilleries there. Uh, one of my favorites is Persephone Brewing. Um, they got a real, like one of the most beautiful venues you've ever seen. It's this fantastic little... Uh, uh, farm that they own the entire land. They grow the hops there themselves. You just hang out there and it's amazing in the summer. So hopefully with these uh, restrictions uh, lowering in British Columbia, maybe it'll be open by then. I, uh, or at least during the time that I'm there, get to enjoy the sun, get to uh, drink some beers that aren't in cans. That's what I'm really hoping for. Uh, I fucking miss drinking beer out of a glass that was freshly poured. Doesn't count the same way if it's from a bottle or a can originally. No real reason behind it, but something about that, you know, someone pouring that with a nice, nice, like, brothy head kind of deal. That's what you want. I guess this wasn't really supposed to be a brewery beer talk, but it's kind of delved into that. Um, yeah, back to Persephone, or actually back to just like the things with isolation and uh, the restrictions. I was talking with uh, the girl who was uh, running the front counter at Brassnack today, and it's kind of an interesting thing because 
no one really knows what exactly the deal is. So restaurants and bars are gonna start opening up uh, pretty shortly, as long as they give the government a uh, reason or a clear action plan as to how they will uh, feasibly do the social distancing while being in close quarters. But it's kind of a tricky thing because there's a lot of ambiguity involved with the the whole situation we don't really know what to do uh there's people are putting in action plans a few of my friends who are in the food industry have talked to me about what their restaurants their bars are doing and it's kind of changed the whole uh north american system uh which is heavily involved around tips and the point of sale has really changed is really going to change there's not going to be that much interaction between person to person, which is kind of the thing that we had going for it. Like, I don't know why people would necessarily be tipping their server when they don't really have a server. Uh, some of the, the ways the plans are laid out, it's pretty much you get like a ticket and that ticket gives you your table. And that's pretty much the only point of contact you have with any kind of person. Other places like Brassneck, when I was talking with them, they don't really know what what's going to happen. They're a pretty small, uh, small scale place. They have about 50 percent occupancy, which is the limit that BC government's given us. It's more of a guideline. It's not really exactly uh, uh, set in stone. 50 is fine because obviously some places are going to be uh, larger scale than others uh, and 50 people in a small uh, compact room is not going to be the same as 50 people in something that's like the size of an ice rink shout out to ice rinks i'm in canada sports hockey sports i work out also i think every episode i'm just gonna plug that i work out don't play hockey never did played it like a little bit when i was uh when i was a kid but was never all that good at it and more so, my parents didn't want to get up at five in the morning to take their kid to hockey. Um, yeah, back to back to talking about Brassneck. They uh, they don't really know what's going to happen because like they're doing fine right now with how things are going with all the uh, liquor sales they're getting, but they still do want to have people inside the restaurant or inside the the bar. They're a brewery. They get a lot of their money through pouring beers for guests and when you have to limit the occupancy like that and you have to also increase clientele that's going to be a higher cost of business there's also the worry that yeah even if these restrictions are levied or they they've kind of way we're in a new phase where they're opening up restaurants and bars what if people just don't come what if people just don't come to the restaurant? That's a, that's a thing that's kind of worrying as well. I've worked in the industry for quite a while. Uh, that's why I'm probably doing all these videos is that I like supporting these local businesses. Also, it means that I don't have a job. So I have the time to support these local businesses. But as, as much as uh, like I accept and I realize that I'm pretty in a pretty good situation as things go right now. Um, I've been trying to support local businesses as much as possible, especially when it comes down to like uh, beer, wine, cider, distilleries. Uh, those are, are kind of industries where times like this, they're going to usually suffer the local ones because they're not going to be able to compete with the prices of something, say, your Budweiser, your Molson, your Stella. They're offering a bigger brand at a cheaper price than a lot of the local stuff. But they're the companies that are going to be able to survive the whole thing. And let's face it, people are going to they're going to be drinking throughout the whole whole COVID scenario as long as as long as liquor stores are open people are going to drink same with like in Canada uh, where we is legalized. There was, I remember when the lockdowns were uh, in full effect throughout federal levels, uh, pr every province was like, nah, 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 we ain't going outside. 
they made sure to keep liquor stores and weed stores open uh, because they know that's look we're uh, from what I hear we're friendly people but we like our booze and a good chunk of them let us like our weed like most people around the world it's just that you know we sell it legally um it's just yeah i i fully lost my train of thought uh, and talking about alcohol i think i've been talking about that pretty much the whole time um yeah so back to that i've been supporting these local businesses just because they're the ones they're the ones who are getting the real impact out of this the billion dollar beer companies yeah, it's going to be cheaper for me to buy a six pack from them or, but that being said, every now and then I do buy Pabst Blue Ribbon and Old Milwaukee. Shout out to my university days and that, uh, that taste has, it's never gone away from me. Um, yeah. And sorry, uh, again, this is what this is, is I, I lose my train of thought and then kind of veer back and forth and then eventually hit the the target of what i wanted to talk about this i don't even think this was the what i plan on talking about i think i planned on talking about haircuts and how they're happening now and i'm really excited that i can finally get a haircut in a while also super annoyed with all of those those people who, who are throwing her throwing protests about the fact that they can't get haircuts Fuck you, white people. You know who you're talking about. Or I'm talking... I don't... No, I don't. Maybe I've had a couple too many of these beers. Anyway, fuck you if you're protesting about getting a haircut. I think you should not be allowed to enter any barber again. And if you are on Facebook somewhere, very active with your garbage activism, I will do nothing in my power because I don't use Facebook. But if I owned a barbershop and you were on there, you would be banned. And I suggest all barbershops, hairdressers, ban anyone who is actively protesting because they want a haircut because they fucking suck and they are putting us all in danger. They're putting your own business in danger because part of your business involves us needing to levy these restrictions and they're doing pretty much everything possible to force us back into lockdown because they're fucking idiots. And that is not exactly the way I wanted to end this. Uh, I lost my train of thought pretty early on, but that was what I wanted to talk about and I needed to tackle it a little bit. Anyway, uh, I just want to say again, support the local businesses. They're the ones who need it. And if you're living in British Columbia or any other place that's starting to open up businesses to the public again, first of all, let's all just be really thankful uh, that we're in a, <laughs> in a country or in a place like this where we have, we're just lucky. We're so lucky that our that our government was able to do enough in time, or we were in a situation where we had limited access to other countries, other travel, and just be happy. Uh, that's that's what I kind of want to get out of this. Also, I want to say, fuck you, lockdown protesters, one more time. I'm gonna throw that into as many videos as possible. Also. While I'm at it, um, America, I'm talking to the people now. Oh, you are going to love this, this foreigner telling you how it is. I am sorry. I'm sorry that things are going this way. It sucks. So many of you are such good people and you have to deal with, well, you know. You know what you have to deal with. I don't think I have to delve too deep into it. But maybe someday you're going to just join the rest of Western first world countries, many second world countries, and have public health care, have that uh, socialized health care that so many, so many Republicans are afraid of. Uh, 
even though they like uh, Russia. Wow, again, not the way I plan on going with this. Um, but Republicans stop jerking off Russia and also stop jerking off all the private insurance companies. See, this could go any, any way. This was supposed to be a conversation about a beer and then it mostly was. And then I talked about, I ended it on sucking off Russia and the insurance companies. So yeah, welcome to the show. This is, I guess, what it is now. Uh, thanks for listening, guys.